Everybody, in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, the optimal setting, in my opinion, for the TCL 27G64 gaming monitor. Now, uh, I posted lots of videos about it for those who are planning to purchase the screen. I mean, if I was in the same situation, I really want somebody to share as much information as possible so we can make a smarter buying decision. So this is why I'm sharing it with you. And I uh, just know that whatever I share here, uh, this is also based on my preference. Some things are, again, more objective. Some things are subjective. Uh, the thing is that people usually, when they play, uh, for example, gamers play games, uh, they want the game to look the best. They want deep uh, blacks. They want to make sure they avoid issues with VA displays like black smearing, ghosting, inverse ghosting. And they try to find the best balance for them uh, to use the monitor where it's actually served them well. Maybe it's for critical work. Maybe it's uh, for gaming. Uh, maybe just one setting is that is for everything and can work well for them. So in this video, I'm going to cover all that. So it did ask me to do some different testing, like in a dark scene and all this stuff. And this is great, by the way. We want to test this uh, display to its, uh, you know, try to find the issues that it might raise in certain situations. Uh, and uh, overall, again, I have to say that in certain settings, the considering this is a V display, it actually performed very well. Uh, and this is why I decided to keep it, of course, as a main screen. Uh, probably going to buy an OLED soon, but it's a side screen. But as a main screen, I don't want something that's going to burn fast. And I'm going to use it a lot, of course, many hours. I'm also developing lots of things, website and apps and all this stuff. So I'm using lots of UI and uh, development um, IDEs. So definitely I don't want to do this on an OLED screen. Anyway, uh, chit chat aside, let's uh, jump into the settings. All right, regarding FreeSync, there's no reason not to keep it on. Keep in mind that I'm using DisplayPort, so uh, on NVIDIA control panel, it won't actually detect uh, G-Sync. So I think yeah, you need to use HDMI for that, but I need to do more testing about G-Sync compatibility, which I'm going, hopefully I'm going to do today. So leave it on. Uh, the dark part, part of me, just know that it's not like, all right, you're going to reduce it, you're going to get better blacks. No, just leave it, I think, on default. Uh, this is unless you need in certain situations where you want to bring up more things from the shadows, you can uh, use it to, you know, increase the volume. Response time, I highly recommend put it on fast, uh, rather than on fastest. Fastest just uh, uh, produces reverse ghosting, black smearing, especially in Windows. I think it's just a gimmick on the display. Um, the thing is that uh, if you're again playing uh, Valorant, CSGO, all this stuff, probably the screen is not for you anyway. So leave it on fast. It works well, but I wouldn't go fastest. Normal is also good, by the way, but of course, worse response time. All right, crosshair again, just if you want uh, one situation, for example, when I play Battlefield without HUD, there wasn't a cursor uh, when I'm actually, you know, uh, aiming from the hip. So this is why I actually use this. So that situation, of course, if in only certain games, I mean, if you want uh, a cursor going to overlay the game, you can actually use it. A timer is how much time the OSD will actually uh, display. Uh, up to you refresh rate just display the refresh it on the screen itself you can actually see it here in the osd it says 180 hertz but if you want an overlay you can turn it on now regarding local dimming depends you see when you uh, move it from high to to a lower one this means that the local dimming lights are going to be lower so you're going to see decrease in brightness when you reduce the local dimming from high to medium standard of course you can turn it off now if you're using hdr keep it to the max. In certain situations, you might be fine, uh, especially if you are playing in a dark room, uh, to lower it uh, to, for example, medium standard, because uh, the blacks become darker. And the reason for that, because we only have 180 uh, local dimming zones, uh, it's going to be less blooming. So it also reduces blooming and therefore we're going to get deeper blacks. But it also impairs some, some of the immersion because when the brightness is up, you're going to feel that you're more immersed in the game, that you are you know, inside the game, just everything pop. But sometimes my our eyes get used to lower brightness. So again, it's up to you to play with it. If you want even deeper blacks, you can lower it. And if you are fine with the brightness, you can stay even with lower settings. Working with Windows, I recommend uh, if you really want to do precise work and don't want the blooming to affect everything, just reduce it to medium and below. You can even turn it off. But it's not a must. If you're not doing critical work, you can just leave it on high. Even with Windows, it will be fine, which quite surprised me, to be honest. I mean, when I used the Xiaomi Mini LED, for example, it was terrible on Windows. I mean, in the highest settings. All right, so this is a recommendation. I keep it on high almost all the time. Brightness, uh, okay, so here uh, I will just use the minimum as 80, but again, if you're in dark room and you want to reduce it a bit, you can. Also, the play on the other settings combination. Uh, in HDR, I'm going to put it to the max, uh, 100. Uh, with SDR, it can depend. Sometimes I really want it to be, uh, you know, 80. Sometimes I want to be even higher. But of course, it will also uh, reduce the blacks and also increase the blooming. I think 80 is kind of optimal for most of the things you'll do uh, in SDR, but sometimes you want to increase it even more that you want the bright to be even brighter. But overall, I think 80 is a good start. 
Now contrast it's 50 by default. I actually enjoy increasing it more in games. Actually some games I really enjoy like putting it even 80, even something going to 100. Uh, but I think 80 is kind of a, between 60 and 80 is kind of the sweet spot for me for many things. Again, especially gaming. It just brings everything out even more. Uh, so yeah, try something between, you can leave it by default, but if you want more things to pop, you can even go with between 60 to 80, try it out and see what you like best. By default, I leave it for myself for 60, and then I'm gonna lift it up if I need to. Sharpness, I am not gonna charge it, uh, gamma one, and again, this is for recent display. Scenario, scenario mode will depend. Sometimes, uh, you know, you can change it. You just change, of course, different colors. I personally prefer just leaving it on standard. Uh, uh, I don't really care about these little changes. It's not really make anything significant for me. Uh, but again, it's optimized for different type of game genres. You can play with it. This is more of very subjective. So try it out if you like it and see if it works better for you and different situations like ebook, iSaver, all this stuff. Maybe the ebook, iSaver are more are better for those particular uses. But the other one, just try it out, see if you like it. If not, stay on standard. Uh, color temperature, I put it on standard. Some situation when you're watching, watching a movie, for example, you can put it on warm up to you. Saturation, actually, I put it on uh, 55, 55, 55. This is a uh, five volumes more on all their, again, RGB. Uh, because I really like it a bit more saturated. Some people even really like, like it even more and you can play with it. This is very personal and subjective. I personally like it just a bit more, 55, 55, 55 compared to the other settings that I put. It goes well together. Color tone, just leave it on 50. Color space, well, this is important. You see, for uh, most of the content, of course, designed for sRGB, unless you're doing critical work for, say, like, for example, HDR, like REC 7, uh, 7, uh, 790, or you need uh, Adobe RGB space, uh, you're going to choose those respectively. But the thing is that original looks so much better for games, even though they're designed for sRGB. The color won't be, of course, accurate, and this uh, monitor is um, calibrated for sRGB, but it looks so much better that you just leave it on original. Even the gradients, look, the gradation looks so much better on original. There's no reason for me even to use this RGB. And I think SR, uh, the original one is the widest gamut. I'm not sure 100%, but I think so. Anyway, I just put it on original and I don't touch it. For critical, critical work like Photoshop, sometimes I'm going to change it. But most of the time when I'm gaming, original all the way. It just looks so much better. Now, the other thing, and it's actually very important because it's so useful that if you go to input, uh, you're going to see an option, uh, sorry, for the settings, you're going to see an option that's called DDCCI. Now, basically, DDCCI means uh, Display Data Channel Command Interface. And what it does, it enables a two-way conversation between your computer and the monitor. So we can adjust settings and receive information. So let me show you how it works. So if you go to Twinkle Tray and download the software uh, called Twinkle Tray or from the Microsoft Store, the software will install in the system tray, as you can see here. And if you click it, you can see that it detects monitor the support uh, this feature, like for example, my LG Ultra Gear and the TCL 27G64. And what it allows me to do is just basically change the brightness on in Windows. I don't need to get to the OSD and change it. Very, very convenient. But it goes more than that. Like if you go to the center, you can see which display actually support this feature. You can see that the TCL is there. There's a V, you see, near the communication method DDCCI. You can see if you go to the setting, we can turn on contrast and volume control as well. Power state is also available, but they warn us, you know, that can lead to un, uh, uh, unresponsive state. So I didn't use it. Might be possible, then you want to take the risk. Now, there's even more features like time adjustment, old key shortcuts, and so on. So it's really, really neat feature. And it's free, by the way. You can download this uh, software for free. So once I have it active with the TCL, I can change the brightness, the volume, if again, your headphones are connected and the contrast as well. All of that will actually affect almost, I mean, it can affect immediately. You decide how many seconds you want to see the difference when you're actually changing the slider, which is also a cool feature in the settings. I don't need to go to the OSD. Let me show you, by the way, an off screen so you can see how it works. Again, this is off screen, but you can actually see when I'm changing the brightness or the contrast, it changes uh, it on the screen. So, so convenient. Yeah, so basically that's it. These are my recommended settings. Keep in mind there are my things that I'm not aware of. I'm not an expert, just a gamer, but just uh, dug a bit, you know, to find more information to share with you. So now you know, so even the DCCCI is really excellent feature and I use it by default, install the software. There are probably other ones, of course, that are there. Uh, just this is the one recommended uh, by many. So it makes it very, very easy to make changes. If you have any question or suggestion tips for others in the comment section below, thanks for watching. Consider also subscribing to my channel. 
Tschüss.